I met my wife in orchestra in our high school days. Uh -huh. So she was playing flute and I was playing bass. And so it's the typical romance of the lowest register and the highest <coughs> register, you know, that's how it always goes. But, well, I meant, I meant less that she has a hard time and more that she's just very generous with her talent. I think she's very talented. She doesn't have the most confidence, to be honest. She doesn't feel very confident in her voice, mm -hmm. which is crazy because here she is on this really successful flying yeah, Lotus Records. And, yeah. and I think it's lovely, but it's funny. She just, she just doesn't realize it. I try to tell her all the time, but I think because I'm, I'm the husband, she doesn't believe me. But beyond that, uh, the Victorian stuff was just, we both have an appreciation for the era how handcrafted it is, how delicate and, and well designed. And I think it has so many parallels to our modern world, it's crazy. Like how much we've lost and how much we've gained mm -hmm. and how much people don't know of it. So you can have fun with the idea. If you dressed up like the 60s, everybody knows what the 60s look like, right? If you dress up like the 70s or 50s or whatever, everyone knows. But Victorian, it's still like hazy. Really? So you can have more fun with it, I feel. My soundtrack to the Boxer Rebellion. Do you know the Boxer Rebellion? The Boxer Rebellion was a war that happened between China and Great Britain and other countries as well in 1898 to 1901. Mm -hmm. It was when a group of Chinese nationalists wanted to push out the imperialist forces of the British out of mainland China and they did this by they, they drank these magic teas and they believed they had these magic powers. I mean this is totally true. They believed they had all these magical powers to be able to being vulnerable to bullets and arrows, to fly, to raise the dead amongst them, to fight their battles for them. So they were fully convinced of this and they fought the British who had guns and cannon. And a hundred thousand trained martial artists from the north all died, all perished. And so as an inspiration, I mean this is, not only is this an, an insane story that rarely gets told and very few people know the Boxer Rebellion, because it was the same time as the Spanish-American War, it was all these other points of history kind of cloud our memory, but also just the fact that it was magic. People had magic, and they were fighting against, you know, those righteous cause. It's this crazy, crazy mix of things that make for this really inspiring moment in history, even though it was all tragic, you know, it was like this. Yeah, it's typical day that was done. Yeah. <laughs> record is, is a little bit more inspired by something that's less to do with a, like a war. <laughs> I really like this idea that over time we design our own reality. Mm -hmm. By the power of our own thought we design our world. Okay. And so bespoke of course refers to when you have a suit made totally without a pattern. That it's made from hand by a, a really good tailor who can make it totally to fit, fit you. You know, and I wanted the record to be like that. I want the record to fit people's reality. I want the record to, to do this. And I thought one of the most important things is to have a lot of voices on the record, because that speaks to people directly, even if it's not in English, and, or you know, in a language people understand. It speaks to them on a basic level. And also a lot of acoustic instruments, like real drums and real instruments. So these are things that got me excited to make another record. So I, I started to put on the soup, and it's making its own weird stew. It's own goulash, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> it's own weird, hearty goulash. And then we put the bread in, we put the paprika in, and it's starting to get weird. Who are the collaborators? Uh, so far I've worked with Anara George from The Bird and the Bee. I don't know. It's just a kind of more pop group. Uh -huh. um, Malosh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's on the record, does a fantastic job. Uh, Amir Yagmai, who Did also... Is he singing? Oh yeah. Malosh. <laughs> I love it, I love it. It's the first single off the record, will probably be that song. It's very strong, I feel. I think his production is, is great as well. You know, it's funny opinion. because he, he makes them smooth, like he'll make, this is a, I don't know if this, this phrase translates, but he makes music that makes girls' panties drop, you know? Yeah. Like really, like, Absolutely. make them swoon. But if you meet him in person, he's like one of the nerdiest guys you ever meet. 
Yeah. yeah. He does it. His music is like, wow, like he's like R and B, like he's like R. Kelly, but like, well, not entirely. <laughs> <laughs> I tease. I tease. Um, and and so and then I have other guest vocalists and stuff too. I have Omas Omas Keith from Sara. He's guesting on the song and. I have Amir Yagmai from Jogger, who also was on Righteous Fist of Harmony. He's on the record right now. And I'm looking to have my wife on there, probably. It's kind of a typical... You think I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to give her some, some confidence there. I'm trying to have a usual cast of characters, because to be honest, this will probably be my last uh, record for Ninja Tune. Really? I'm planning. I'm planning to have it be my Why? last. You know, not only every record needs a theme, but every record label has, a, has kind of an essence. Right? When you're making music, intrinsically, the songs they're choosing, they're helping you choose, and the songs they want to have go on records. Because I'm not just making music and giving them the score, like, let's release this thing. They have a say in what I do. They're telling me certain things, you know, they give me certain ideas. And really? It happens with any label, it's just inevitable. And so I feel wow. like I've done that for a little bit, and I'm ready to move on. see people who just make music because they're just, oh, I have to make the next record, I have to get paid, or, or something stupid like that. You know, the real truth of the matter is that a record needs to have a reason to exist, and so I always get drawn to certain ideas to make a record around, mm -hmm. um, be it samba music, or be it Wales, or the country of Wales, sorry, <laughs> or, or invention, or something, you know, there's always a reason. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, I mean, the process to how it actually happens is tricky sometimes, you know, it's like sometimes you have an idea that seems good, but that idea needs to be given room to breathe and to change. Because if you're too rigid, you can kill an idea. You can overwork it like bread, you know. You, you do too much to bread and it can die. Uh -huh. Same thing with musical thoughts. You do too much processing, too many effects, too much pushing and poking, and it dies on the table. You've got to be careful with that. And um, how, how do you find these, these ideas? Oh. So what inspires you? You know, I think I'm like anybody. I'm curious. I read, I watch, I listen. All these things Life go into point. a soup. Well, like, uh, for instance, uh, books. Yeah. I really like reading apocalyptic science fiction novels. What you kind know? of? Apocalyptic? Uh -huh. The kind where, like, a comet's headed towards Earth and everyone mm -hmm. dies. Or, you know, everyone but a few people die. I, I, somehow that really calls to me. I, I don't know why. And then films. I like Japanese animation a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Things like Akira or Astro Boy or mm -hmm. uh, My Neighbor Totoro or things like that. So it has nothing to do with my music, though, right? Nothing. And yet it has everything, because these are all things that you pull from subconsciously. So be it sound design from one of these movies, or, or just the concept of disaster, or, or ill will. These are all things that get fed into the soup, I guess. I, you know, I'll be totally honest, I try to stay somewhat unconscious about what inspires me. Because as soon as you feel like you, you know what it is, then it's a dead idea. You need to give it room, you know? If I really knew what I was doing, I wouldn't do it. And um, you, you mentioned the apocalypse and, and disaster, so why, why are always these kind of bad things? Well, well two things. Daedalus, uh, my namesake, I like him a lot because he's a tragic character. Yeah. He, he, his son dies, he kills his cousin, he's like doomed to a life of somewhat sadness. And I feel like electronic music is such a wide idea, why doesn't it reflect some of the other human ideas? You know, jealousy, anger, disappointment. Mm -hmm. I think music can reflect those things as well as being dance music, you know, it could be both things. And then of course too, I like that those minor chords, I like those kind of songs, I like those stories. Yeah, but on, on the other hand, your music sounds happier, or, or I don't know. Yeah, but that's, you have to have some sweet to have sour, and that's why you have to have sour to have sweet. If, if it was all sugar the whole time, it would be like chant, trance, it would be really cheesy and like it would go nowhere. But when you have a song, a sour song, a sad song, then it makes the happy that much more, you know, both, I think. <laughs> 